Alright guys, how's it going? So this is going to be a very basic tutorial today and I'm going to cover the constraint pivot. Now, I'm working with a client, we have this kind of door mechanism, the door's a bit more complex than what you see here but the basic fundamentals. Now, when I go to rotate, obviously I'm rotating around the origin. And there's several ways we can get around this, uh, so let's say if I go into a 3D cursor I move it 2.3 metres back it's essentially here where the pivot point is, or roughly. I can then go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to the 3D cursor. And that kind of gives me what I need. Now, like I mentioned, the rig was a little bit more complex than this. Just moving the origin, it didn't cut it. So what we can do here is, we can actually use an object constraint. Now, keep in mind where my 3D cursor position is. If I come up to Add, add in an empty and I'll just do something like a plane axis. It actually puts it in the same position of the 3D cursor. So if the 3D cursor was here for example, it would add an empty there. So that's kind of one tip. And what I can do here is I can select the door, I can add in a constraint and then I can go to pivot. I can then select the target which is essentially the empty. And that means when I rotate, I'm now rotating using this as a pivot point. Now what I can do here is just to prove a point, I can go to Object, Set Origin, I'll do Origin to the centre of Mass, so the Origin's essentially here. But when I go to rotate the item, it'll now rotate around the pivot. So this is a very good way for creating a pivot point but still keeping your origin. So do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, cost you nothing, just press that button. Take care, peace.